Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCullough. Hope you guys are all doing well. We are back, and of course, we are here to bring you the latest Manchester United news. Although, I'm still feeling it in my chest from yesterday. Yes, Manchester United getting absolutely battered by Brentford 4-0. Now, I kind of felt before the game we were going to lose. I felt a little bit pessimistic about it going into it. Maybe because we lost against Brighton, but I didn't expect that. We got absolutely battered off them 4-0. And, you know, the fallout has been expected and deserved. There's been a lot of anger from Manchester United fans. And it's understandable. United fans are fed up with what they're seeing. Not fed up with Eric Ten Hag. Most Manchester United fans I've spoken to um, believe Manchester, you know, Eric Ten Hag deserves to be given time. But he's got his hands tied behind his back with these owners because these owners are running Manchester United into the ground. Um, and Gary Neville has been speaking about that. And after the game yesterday on Sky, he was quoted as saying, there's a family over there in America who are literally letting their employees take all the hits for them. That is unforgivable. Joel Glazer has to get on a plane to Manchester tomorrow. Tell everyone what the hell his plan is. What is he doing? That's what Gary Neville's saying. Now, a little bit late from old Gary, but great to hear him saying it nevertheless. Better late than never, eh? Um, and hopefully, there is some momentum building against these owners. Obviously, we've had the sustained protests um, over the last couple of games to the end of last season um, and the beginning to this season. They're expected to continue and my wholehearted support to any protests against the Glazers. But it's great to have Gary Neville amplifying them as well. And he got into an argument with Jamie Redknapp about it and I was there thinking, Jamie Redknapp, just shut the fuck up. You don't have a clue what you're talking about, mate. Get back to selling sketches or whatever it is you do. But yeah, Gary Neville, spot on there. Um, we also hear at this moment in time now, it feels weird. Um, to, in fact, we're not going to get onto transfers yet. Let's talk about Eric Tenag because we have another story where the Manchester United squad were due to have a day off today. But Eric Tenag was so furious with their performances against Brentford that he told them to report to Carrington for training this morning. Uh, that was from Hursty, Hurst Class on Twitter. Um, and you know what? Bang on Eric Tenag. I hope he gets stuck into the Muppet. That performance was heartless, spineless. You know what? I don't care if you lose a game in the Premier League. You can lose a game in the Premier League. It's not like we're Premier League winners and all that. But when we're trying to like just show a little something, show that you care, lie to me at least. You don't. It's so obvious and it's just... Oh, we've got a long way to go, man. And this manager needs the backing. He needs the backing. Um, now, in regards to backing, who are we going to sign? Are we going to sign anyone? You know, we've got Malassi, we've got Ericsson, we've got Lissandro Martinez, but we clearly need more. Ralph Rangnick was quoted as saying United could need 8, 9, 10 players, and he was probably right. You're looking at the team at the moment, what do we need? A right back, because it looks like Aaron Wambasaka is going to do one. Um, we probably need two midfielders. We definitely need one, we probably need two. In fact, we definitely need two. We're not going to get two. We might get two, Frankie De Jong and Rabiot. But we'll talk about that in a bit. We need two midfielders. Um, we need a right winger. We need a striker. We need so many players, man. Anyway, Eric Ten Hag believes Frankie De Jong will choose Manchester United ahead of Chelsea in a straight choice. That comes from the mirror. Eric Ten Hag still confident. Now, Chelsea, there's been reports that they've kind of encountered the same issues as us. Barcelona trying to get us to cough up an extra 17 million to pay Frank. You know, this, that and the other, all that kind of chatter. And hopefully we're in the end game here and this transfer gets dealt with one way or the other. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up staying at Barcelona now. But there's been a lot of talk that Manchester United are still ahead of the queue. Now, I don't know how much that's changed after us getting absolutely battered by Brentford. But... You know, if we could get... It'd be so good to be able to just get him. Frankie De Jong. And maybe a, you know, a little Adrian Rabiot as well. But uh, just to get Frankie De Jong in would mean so much, I think, to Eric Ten Hag. It'd give him a little bit of confidence. We'd still need a lot more in the team. Like we've just said, not only do we need a Frankie De Jong, we need another midfielder, we need a right winger, we need a striker, we need a right back. We need a lot of players. But just to get that midfielder would be so key. I don't know if it's... 
I was feeling optimistic yesterday morning about us getting Frankie De Jong. Now I feel pessimistic. I don't know if that's because of the result in the game. Maybe it is. Now, next up, um, whilst Manchester United were getting spanked by Brentford, uh, Manchester United's Myrtle and Arnold were running around Europe chasing after Veronique Rabiot, trying to get in, him to sign for Man United. And I believe we've agreed a £15 million deal to sign the player. Decent deal for him, you know what I mean? You don't really know what to expect from him. At least we're not paying over the odds. But his mother is insistent that we do pay over the odds and we do give them lots of dosh. And uh, we're still in discussions with them. We're making progress in talks. And look, it looks like Adrian Rabiot is going to become a Manchester United player. We can stick him in the midfield. It looks like he's madly needed right now. Um, you know, hopefully we can get Frankie De Jong over the line. I'm pessimistic on that one at the minute. Your midfield's changed completely. Eric Ten Hag's got something to work with. But we're going to be lacking again. We're going to be short again. We're not going to get the, the, the attacking players that we need, the reinforcements that we need in attack. We're not going to get... You know, you know, Wan Bissaka could leave and we wouldn't replace him. Like I've done a video on my channel where I explain what's going wrong at Manchester United and why it's the culmination of the Glazer ownership over the last few years. And it's not Eric Ten Hag's fault himself. He's got a difficult job on his hands to turn this around. He needs to be given time. He needs to be given resources. We say this with every single manager, though. I'm sure there's videos of us saying this under Van Gaal, under Mourinho, under Moyes. You know, under everybody. Saying he needs time and resources. And some of the managers never got the time or they never got the resources or both. And, you know, Eric Tenag is going into a game against Liverpool, which we're probably going to lose. Three games in the spin he's going to lose. There's going to be huge pressure on him. Not from me. I think we should back the man, give him time. But three three defeats in three is horrible. In the, you're looking frank, you know, which, whatever De Boer territory you're in. But we need to back him. We need to give him the support because when you look at the clowns he's got to work with and when you look at the summers that we have, remember when Jose finished second and we got him Fred DeLow and Lee Grant? Like, we just we just never back managers. Sir Alex Ferguson leaves, we get Fellaini and Matter. That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even follow a pattern. It doesn't even follow a philosophy. Sure. I'm so hopeful for the manager, but I feel so sorry for him at the same time. Like, he gives me hope. He's got great, you know, potential. He's a forward-thinking manager, modern manager. They can get us playing good attacking football, developing the youth. But these clowns, they're not giving him much to work with, are they? they need to pull their fingers out of their asses. Anyway, before I drive myself to drink, which I already have, Make sure you're keeping it locked. I'm off to go find Frankie De Young. See you later.